Greetings once again. This is Mr. Solomon at Village East Elementary here in Aurora, Colorado, bringing you another tutorial video on how we are using Minecraft in our school. Today's lesson that I've been doing with grades 2 through 5 is how to develop numeracy through a game based learning environment like Minecraft. So here are our standards, our technology standards. Students are going to create and innovate. They're going to work on some projects. We're going to create a number zoo. They're going to communicate and collaborate by working in teams of two, and they'll also practice responsible use of technology as good digital citizens. Our math standards says that students will understand the structures and the properties of a number system, and that numbers are abstract symbols that present real-world quantities, and Minecraft is great for addressing both of these because they are going to practice creating different ways to display a number. In the past, we've talked about what a number is. Numbers can be represented three different ways. As a quantity that you count, as a symbol to know what the numbers look like, and as a verbal. So if I say five, students know what a five means. We've done a circle map in the past where students have dragged objects in to represent the number five. But this time we're going to use Minecraft to do it, which will be much more engaging for students. I gave students the following checklist that you can see here. So we talked about earning points. So each grade level has to choose a number, and fifth graders will choose between 9 and 50, so they only get one one-digit number to choose from. So the more complicated problem that you choose, the more points you can earn, and then the minimum points for each grade will represent what they accumulated. There are seven different zones in Minecraft. We have area one for addition or multiplication, area two for subtraction or division, they're going to use pattern blocks. They're going to create animal pens to show quantity. They're going to plant seeds or use flowers. They're going to build the number out of blocks. And then they're going to write the number either by spelling it or creating a word problem. And then if you look down here, you can see that the point total for students, 35 points for fifth grade. There's a grand total of 41 altogether. Fourth graders need a minimum of 30 points, third grade a minimum of 25 points, and second grade a minimum of 20. Students then get to choose a partner. They will choose their number, and then they start filling in this uh, score sheet to figure out how many points they're earning as they start creating projects in each of these areas. So we'll check in on each grade level as we continue, and you'll see what fifth graders, fourth graders, third graders, and hopefully even second graders can do with the number zoo. All right, welcome back. We're checking in on our fifth grade class. This is our first class of the day. And so this is the spawn point where students come in. This is the large work area. And what I've done is I have put border blocks down because students can only can go through areas 1 to 8 or 9 to 16 because they're working in pairs. We have about 26 students, so that would be 13 zones. So I'm going to walk forward through here walk through the door, more border blocks so students can't get out. And then you'll see that each area has their own secure door. So as I walk in you can see that this group looks like they're building something backwards. Here's area one. So it looks like their number is 24. They have earned three points twice for multiplication problems and two points twice for two-digit addition. Here we have a division problem. Their pattern blocks aren't done. Then they got to put atomals that equals 24. Doesn't look like they're quite done with that. Planting seeds. We'll go to some other areas and see. This group did 26. So here they have one multiplication problem and three addition, three division problems, and one subtraction. Here's their pattern blocks for 26. Here are their animal pens, 26 animals. Here are their flowers and seeds. They planted 26, looks like they have a sign. Okay, so you can see that they've separated this out. Here they've built the number 26. 20 in the back. Looks like I don't have quite enough room for longer numbers. And then if I look at their books, I'll take a book out of their chest, and then if I right-click, I can see they have a number. 
now I'm going to check their other book because they were supposed to write a story problem. And there's their story problem. So these students have done a good job and they even finished uh, early so I gave them the task of creating a structure that has a perimeter of their number. There's a 24, let's keep zipping around. What I can do here in teacher mode is that I can give myself faster speed. My son showed me this little trick. So now I can really zip around quickly. Uh, there's the addition subtraction zone. There's the pattern block zone. There's the animal zone. Flowers. Writing. These students chose a higher number of 60. Different pattern blocks. It's going to be a busy animal pen that they have. I like how they did their seeds. I like how they wrote 60. Let's check in on the other side. This group still needs to build their numbers. So what I can do is look over here, they're in area 8, and I can send them a message. Group 8, please work on area 6 and build your number. I've noticed that a lot of students, once you have animals open, all they want to do is play with the animals. So I turn that off until the last day, which is today. So there's number 10. I see this group doesn't have an area one finished. Six. Uh, reminding them they got to finish their area. There's a nice 15 there. So this really gives students a way to see numbers represented different ways. And that was really the goal. Symbolic, verbal, linguistic. So we'll zip around to the other group here. And there's a number 20. They've spelled 20. They planted 20 seeds. Looks like they have 20 of just one, or 15 in one animal. There's their pattern blocks. Let's take a look at their addition and subtraction. That looks good. Okay. 20 seems to be a popular number. So I see they don't have area 2 finished. That's group 11. Okay, so that's how we're doing in fifth grade. It just gives you a quick idea of how this looks and you can see that it really gives students a way to see numbers in multiple different ways. And that was really the goal of this assignment. So they've done a really nice job and we will check in on fourth grade a little later in the day. I'll go back to my spawn point. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're back with a group of fourth graders now and we are going to do the zoo exhibit. So students are supposed to walk around and just look at what other people have done. And I see some people are breaking stuff, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Okay, so if we look in area one, there's a 20. Not quite, they don't have a plus sign instead of a minus sign. I see they're developing a pattern here. There's 20. There's our 20 animals. There's our 20 seeds. So we'll zip around here and look real quick. The number looks backwards. 10. Okay, there's our numbers 10. There's our ways to show 10. I think if I did this again, I would make them. Uh, create base 10 blocks. When I said pattern blocks, it was a little confusing for some to figure that out. Uh, we'll just zip around real quick. There's a 30. That looks good. There's a 20. That looks good. That's a very nice job here. They have the seeds. They have their animals separated out. They've shown me 20. This group did a really nice job here. So, highly 
really engaging activity. Kids are really into it. Right now we're just in the exhibit phase, so they're just walking through the zoos and looking at what everybody created. But I think they're getting the hang of this. I don't see 20 animals there. So what I'm going to do is go through with my checklist that the students created and double check that they've done everything and see. Looks like they did a number sentence instead of spelling the words here. No, not quite. That doesn't equal 20. So I can tell here that this group needs some help on figuring out how to do 20. So it's a good assessment to see if kids understand number and numeracy or not. So we'll check in once uh, third grade comes in a little later. Right now everybody is just enjoying the exhibits. Okay, now we're with a group of third graders and they're doing their zoo exhibit. And so we're looking at a group that has 16 as their number. Looks like they have all of their seeds planted. They have their addition problems correct. That looks good. They have their pattern block shown right. They did a nice job, these two. And this is an example as they're trying to draw number two. And their number two looks slightly off. They need to work on some of their construction. Looks like they're almost done. Some of these addition problems aren't right. They have addition where there should be subtraction. There's a 20. Okay. Some of these look good. I turned off animals. I think if I was to do this again in the world that I will share, I will turn off animals because as soon as animals get turned on, kids go kind of crazy and then they stop paying attention to anything else. So there's 14. So these guys finished early. And so what I asked them to do was build a, a structure that has a perimeter of 14. And so they realized just how small of an area that really is. So it's more like an outhouse. So let's see. So I told them something that small is probably going to be the size of a toilet. And there's your toilet. Yeah, everybody's enjoying the tour of everybody's zoo. You can see. This guy's got it. Looks good. Everything looks good. So if I were to do this again, I think we'll turn animals off. We'll have them plant seeds in one area and maybe plant flowers in another. And maybe try something with perimeter of that number. So they did a good job. Okay, welcome back. Just wanted to follow up with one final activity that students did on the last day where I asked them to complete a Google form with some feedback for me. So who they worked with, what number did they build, did they meet the point requirements, what was easiest, what was hardest, how did this teach them about numeracy and numbers, what were they learning in Minecraft, and any other suggestions. And then that creates a Google form that I can now share with teachers and it also helps me see what kids were learning. So we'll start with fifth grade. A lot of kids talked about it and it teaches them how to work together. Talk they can do a lot with numbers. That's some good feedback over here. Having a team is better than working alone. So I met most of the objectives. I think most of the kids understood that numbers can be represented in different ways. That's kind of what I was looking for to see if they understand what numeracy is. Think about what the problem says. I like this one. It says Minecraft is not what you watch other people play with spiders and zombies. It's learning how to work with others, not just care about yourself. That's a good feedback point. It helps them to learn division and multiplication. I think next time, like I said before, I'll take out animals and try to have something different in that section, maybe planting seeds instead, and then uh, having planting flowers just as an idea. This is the first time I've tried this with a class and so there's always some things that come up that you learn you would do differently. Thanks for watching.